Chapter 3, Isha, The Spring of My Life. Chapter 3, several people told me a story about some folks who heard heavenly music at 2 in the morning on New Year's Day. Furthermore, they all said these people have heard it again every eight days since. They described exactly when and where each hearing occurred. Some people laughed it off as the trickeries of the wind. But I was reluctant to accept or dismiss the story without evidence. Heaven and earth are home to many mysteries. We all know the stories of dancing girls who pour the morning dew from high above. Perhaps the spirits who observe from the corridors of the heavens seeing a peaceful world called for music to rejoice. And perhaps we who failed to hear it were deafened by our own suffering. I invited a few friends to visit my Hermitage the morning of March 19th, and we spent the whole night listening. By the time first light broke in the east, we had heard nothing. Then suddenly we heard singing from the plum tree outside a window. Poem, just a bush wobbler, to sing morning lotus sutra to this suffering world. Wanting to welcome the visiting bush wobbler, I swept the garden. In falling spring rain, the innkeeper assigns rooms even for the horse. A little, oh, little sparrows, mind your place, be careful there. Lord Horse passes through. In hazy spring mist, sitting inside the great hall, not a hint of sound. Horses pass by, each with its rider, and behind them the skylarks follow with art. There's some art, uh, artistic. No. In Shama Bara, Kyoto, the poem, the friendly barker calls, even the willows tempted, bending to a geisha. This rural village, overrun with bamboo shrub, lucky to see plum, with laughter all day and midnights and nighttimes, moons and flowers, happy new year tides. Countless tea houses and blossoming cherries all flower overnight. Hakuhi wrote, The cherry blossoms are truly cherry blossoms only while we wait. By mark passing time, beating straw to weave beneath this cool summer moon. This is composed on Buddha's birthday, which is April 8th, 1819. Today is April 7th, and tomorrow is April 8th. So, <laughs> this is for Buddha's birthday, written by Isha. Poem, Sweet Tea and Sweet Tears Flow Wetly Over Buddha Through the Whole Spring Day. I must certainly, it must certainly be a holiday today, even for the rain. Composed on Buddha's birthday. Poem, Sweet Tea and Sweet Tears Flow Wetly Over Buddha Through the Whole Spring Day. It must certainly be a holiday today, even for the rain. After an illness, poem, I too made of dust, thin and light as the paper mosquito curtain. With a splish and a splat, a few raindrops splashed down, rainy season stunned. 
on the street corner, the blind musician dances, fan held high overhead. Playing together, these little baby sparrows among bamboo shoots. Now the rains have gone. Two neighboring houses enjoy spring cleaning. On high, narrow suspension bridge of vine looking down into the deep valley. Poem on hands and knees on a shaky bridge. A cuckoo cries far below. Summer's first melon lies firmly hugged to the breast of a sleeping child. From Ming Kyo Cho, Dao Street in Edo, Tokyo. Edo is the same as Tokyo, I think. Poem, I thank the doll that serves my tea and sit enjoying the summer evening breeze. How fortunate I'm not punished for dozing behind the mosquito net. Only just a few mosquitoes buzzing about, old turf people's season. Hurry now, my flies. It's old people's season. You too may share the riches of this fine harvest. The small shrine stands alone, almost lost among saxifragy blossoms. A quiet life, poem, bending, stretching out the little worm inches along my foundation wall. A poem expressing sympathy for a woman recently widowed and who must now make do for herself. Poem, where will you wander in your straw hat once this village rice is planted? Sing Hosanna, what a beautiful bamboo has sprouted overnight. Fan tucked politely under her collar, hands busy picking flowers. Buzzing noisily by my ear, the mosquito must know I'm old. There's a mosquito. Where is a mosquito? Where? Easter's mosquito. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, he has, he says it's buzzing. Where's it buzzing by my ear? And then he has a picture of an ear and a mosquito. Takakura Mountain. Hmm. Uh, Takakura Mountain Poems. Clear icy water races straight down the mountain and into my tub. Ooh, small hermitage lies just beyond the spring, so overgrown with moss. One small mosquito bites hard and again and again, attacking in silence. Passing through the gate, watch your head. You're enjoying a summer. You kata. Footnote, I don't know what a yukata is. Lacking a thresher, I beat the summer wheat against my house. Poem for a woman peddler in Echiko. After wheat harvest, infant on her back, she cries, Sardines, sardines. A cut bamboo sprout, were it not for hungry men, I would have blossomed. A, a little shady spot of grass in summertime sh sanctuary. Even this mountain moss grows flowers all its own, thus nature bestows. One small mosquito larva has climbed to where the new moon shines. 
composed at the home of my friend Du Kura Kubo. Home white sacks of fraggy flowers all around my bedroom bring me lasting light. In the old temple, even a snake has shed his worldly skin. Alice chapter four. I find the last one in the old temple. Even a snake has shed his worldly skin. One before the white sacks of froggy flowers all around my bedroom bring me lasting light. That one. Mm -hmm. White sacks of froggy flowers all around my bedroom. Bring me lasting light. Good? Any comment? Do you like the poet? Mm. I think I have to stop because it's the end of chapter three. I could go on. Chapter 4, I finally decided to visit the far north country, thinking it would be good for my haiku. That's sort of like Basho. Of course, he's kind of following Basho. This is Isha, Isa, I-S-S-A. -S -S when I'd filled my pack and shouldered it over my monk's robe and slipped my beggar's bag around my neck, I was astonished to see that my shadow looked exactly like the image of the eminent recluse and Zen poet Saigyo. Say S A I G Y O eleven eighteen to eleven ninety. That's a pretty ancient poet. That's quite a few years prior. He's a Zen poet. We should read him. This observation shamed me when I thought how different his mind from mine. He was fresh, pure, and white as snow, whereas my mind was still dark and wind-blown as my sleeves. I departed my old hermitage April 16th, walking stick in hand, I traveled only a few miles when I suddenly realized that I was almost 60. Like the moon sinking in the western mountains, my life, too, approaches its final hours. Hmm. As I pass through the Chirakawa barrier, I realized that there was a very good chance I would never again see my home. When a rooster called from a rooftop, I wondered whether he called for me to stop and turn back. The wind over the fields also seemed to beckon me back. I sat down under a tree to rest my weary legs and thinking of the road I'd already traveled my Kashiwabara village seemed somewhere over the mountains, nestled in clouds. Homesick already, I wrote, home. No matter how hard I try, I can't stop thinking of my old village. Same thoughts written as Tonka. Memory returns to those ancient misty trails around my village, but neither flowers nor love bloom there, only my sadness. So very gently I won't even disturb the butterfly the soft spring wind wanders over deep fields with new wheat. I'm being idle. Oh, mosquito larvae are idle like me today, like me tomorrow. Life is brief, desire infinite. Home, so many breezes wander through my summer room, but never enough. Mornings, the flat farmer studies his green rice fields, sown with devotion. That's the poems of From the Spring of My Life by Isha, the Sam Hamill translation. End of chapter, not, I mean, chapter four.